I used to start out just drawing, doodling, scratching around. Something about the motion of drawing kind of stimulates something. I would start out with a list of ideas, you know, like uh, legislature, legislature, <laughs> legislature. Well, if I went back to Arkansas to when I first started drawing for the Advanced Monosalonian, the San Antonio Light, Cincinnati Inquirer, and then the News Observer, probably done about 15,000 cartoons. I wanted to be an editorial cartoonist in a capital city, and I wanted to be sure that my philosophy dovetailed with the newspaper I was working for. In my early years at the News Observer, gosh, we had all these old bulls over there in the legislature. Holzhauser, Jim Hunt, Jesse Helms, cast of characters you know. I got this is gonna be great. Well, here's one. <laughs> it's when the Democrats and the Republicans were kind of evenly matched, I think, and couldn't really get much legislation through it. It was just nothing was going anywhere. Pretty soon after I got to the News Observer, Drew Helms with his he was against everything. I decided he was Senator No, so I drew him with a big no stamp on his desk. Everyone was worried about Mexicans climbing over the wall. You know, we were having a big gas crisis and we needed Mexico. So I got Jimmy Carter climbing the wall here, going into Mexico with a gas can. I don't, I don't have any problem being mean, but I think a cartoon can be more effective if it, it, it ridiculed the target without hammering them over the head. At the same time, you laughed. If I'm at the News Observer and I'm going to work, I do five a week sometimes six. You know, it gets agonizing sometimes. You know, I might go till five in the afternoon with no idea. Some of my best cartoons have come that way. Well, it usually gets down to the point, you know, where the editor's dragging the thing off your <laughs> drawing board. When I finish one, it's just a relief. And then usually when I'm driving home, I start thinking of the cartoon I should have done. I just love the ambiance of a newsroom back in those days typewriters clacking away, just a hive of activity, passing notes around, shouting at each other. <laughs> no, it, was a, it was a great time to be at the News and Observer. I don't know, you got, a, got anything you want to feed me? Some yeah. flood related maybe, something? Uh... The other thing was just election stuff, you know, redistricting maps are out. You could do something funny on that. You know, they come out with new maps, it's the same map. You could have the uh, Republicans making new maps on a Xerox machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His perception of the role is to use humor and images to kind of tweak people. He's, in, he's instinctively opposed to, to power, you know, and sort of holding people to account. It's a sort of a form of dissent, but uh, it's effective, you know. One of my favorite cartoons, coaches were all taking money from Nike. The Deaner, Mac, and Hooker, swoosh smiles. The cost of gas, food, and utilities, along with tax increases, left us down to the last few bucks. So step right up, here comes the North Carolina lottery. They're gonna solve all our problems. Something I never tired of was after I finished a cartoon, going down and watching the press run. Oh God, you can hear it all over the building. Whenever it starts up, the building will kind of shake. Okay, so this all over here used to be a real hive of activity. Every journalist's dream, I think, was after you finish your work, you get to hear that press run. And you're not gonna hear it here unless you go out to Garner. <laughs> anyway, this is where she used to be. Ripped out to please the financiers in Sacramento. It just tore my heart out, really, in a way. This was the beating heart of the newspaper right here, and it's gone. Big sea change, I think, in journalism. It wasn't just an easy observer. Perfect storm, that was just when the Daniels sold them to McClatchy. And then after they bought Knight Ritter, they took on a huge debt. The digital age was coming on and really changed the way newspapers get revenue. And the next thing we knew, they were laying off people right and left. You know, I watched all my friends, you know, wonderful journalists, marched out the door. I was one of the lucky ones. I retired on my own volition in 09. 
I didn't even draw on a napkin for three years. They called up and wanted to know if I would do one a week for the Sunday paper and deal mostly with local and state issues. I don't want to dash off a cartoon, you know, just because it's a cute subject or something. You want to say something. You want to be right. And whatever opinion I take in the cartoon, and that's what's in my heart. That's what I really think. I'm signing my name to this, and I want to be darn sure that, that I'm philosophically in sync with what I'm putting on, on paper. The GOP is trying to pass a health care bill. The reason I'm focusing on Burr is because he represents North Carolina, so he's been pretty quiet. His silence is deafening in that he's going along with it. I was just walking downtown, decided to wander in the museum. I hadn't been in there in a while. The City of Raleigh Museum, we do a eclectic lot of exhibits that tell Raleigh's diverse and rich history. When I walked in, Ernest said, you know, we think we'd like to do a show of your cartoons. So the City of Raleigh Museum honed in on your profession, that um, as print media kind of goes out of circulation, that um, that editorial cartoonist, which has a long, rich history in the United States, is disappearing. So for us, it's kind of a way to sort of celebrate your work, but also put your profession into a context. So we really looked at political cartooning through the life of the United States. Even back to before the Republic was founded, that some of these political cartoons tried to convey and sway the public in favor of revolution and independence. And it is just part of politics and it's part of American culture. Well, Dwayne, we really wanted to include some of your hate mail and love mail in the exhibit, and by far, this one is my favorite. It says, to he who would sell his soul to sell a cartoon, may the fleas of 10,000 camels rest in your crotch hair. Oh boy. <laughs> I remember one time, I'd only been at the paper a couple of weeks, and Frank Daniels sticks his head in the door and says, you know, I was at a party the other night, and three people came up and told me I should fire you. And three people came up and said I should give you a raise. So I guess you're doing okay. Editorial cartoons have kind of been replaced as a, as a satire medium by things like the, the Daily Show and satirical comics. The problem is getting eyes on the cartoons. How do we come off of newspapers and start getting more eyes on our work on social media? I just want to be a part of the discussion and hopefully make people think. And laugh. Well, if they want to laugh, it's okay.